Like we just heard, Iran's massive aerial attack on Israel marked a new chapter in a conflict between the two states that has percolated for years and spiraled since Israel declared war on Hamas last October, as this was the first time that Iran carried out strikes against Israeli territory. For more on this, we're joined by Professor Mason Ritchie, Professor of International Politics at Hanguk University of Foreign Studies. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Good morning. So what's the reason behind Iran's unprecedented attack on Israel? What was their intention? Uh, so the, the proximate uh, reason is that uh, on April 1st, uh, uh, Israel carried out uh, a strike against uh, Iran's uh, consulate annex in Damascus, Syria. Uh, uh, an annex that uh, was apparently used by the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps. Uh, and uh, among the people that were killed there was Brigadier General um, Mohammed uh, Zahedi, uh, who was responsible or one of the people responsible for helping plan the October 7 uh, terrorist attacks uh, last year. Uh, in which 1,200 uh, Israelis, um, the vast majority of them uh, innocent civilians, um, were killed. Uh, and so Iran uh, has launched this attack uh, against Israel as a response uh, to that uh, attack by Israel, that retaliatory uh, attack by Israel uh, against uh, General Zahedi. Uh, this is a real change uh, in some respects. Um, you know, you, we've read in the in the news reports, uh, you know, a game changer or a sea change, uh, in the sense that uh, Israel seems to have moved from, you know, primarily when it uh, aims at I Iranians, uh, it's done so in terms of killing proxies uh, abroad, uh, and in this case, uh, they've chosen to directly eliminate uh, an Iranian uh, member of the military leadership, and so that's uh, that's a change. What what Iran's response? Uh, is I'm not quite sure in the first place. It's clearly, you know, just a, a message of retaliation uh, that, you know, Iran considers itself a grand country, uh, a great, you know, regional power and simply isn't going to stand by while one of its generals is killed. Uh, they may also, for all I know, be trying to distract Israel or perhaps, you know, fan a broader war uh, in the Middle East. Uh, and it might also be part of their strategy to try to split uh, Washington and uh, Jerusalem. Right, and Israeli officials have reportedly said the country's war cabinet favors retaliation against Iran. And it's also said it will respond to Iran's attack when time is right. So when and how will Israel be responding to the attack and what can we expect to happen next? Uh, I do not know the answer to those questions. Um, I don't think anybody, uh, perhaps you know, outside of uh, Israel and, and perhaps uh, Washington knows the answer to those questions. Um, you know, I think that uh, you know, Israel's response uh, you know, could include a direct response uh, against targets in Iran. That would, of course, be uh, escalatory. That would be highly provocative, and that's clearly not something that the United States wants. And I think the, that the United States is going to put pressure on, on Israel not to do that. So if I were guessing today, I would assume that the response is going to be a strike against uh, Iran-linked targets. Uh, in Syria or in Lebanon, uh, that would be my guess. Um, and when that's going to happen, you know, the reports that we're hearing are uh, that this is going to take place imminently. Uh, and you know, what that means is again an open question. Uh, you know, it could be very soon. It could be a few days. It could be delayed. Uh, you know, Iran is uh, excuse me, Israel is going to choose uh, the time. Uh, for its attack that works for it uh, when it has the targets uh, that it wants uh, and ultimately you know when I think it can it believes that it can do so uh, largely with the support of the United States because it would be uh, you know somewhat difficult for Israel to push too far past what the United States is willing to countenance. Right like you just said the United States does not want this to escalate into a wider war and that actually and the Biden actually said it will not take part in any counter-strike against Iran. And so can the U.S. and its allies prevent the situation from escalating into a wider regional war, in your opinion? Um, my guess is yes, um, simply because, uh, you know, the United States does have, uh, you know, pretty significant leverage um, over Israel uh, in terms of intelligence sharing, in terms of uh, military support, in terms of diplomatic support. Um, you know, the relationship between Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu is not very good. 
Um, but Israel doesn't, you know, doesn't have the luxury of uh, of having a president right now uh, in the United States who 100 support 100 percent supports the things that Israel might like to do um, in this situation. Uh, this is, of course, especially important for for Joe Biden right now. Uh, heading into a general election in November, where the last thing that he wants uh, is uh, to be blamed for uh, a large uh, regional Middle East war. So I think the United States is going to put significant pressure on Israel to keep its response to Iran contained. That's my guess. I could be wrong. Uh, we're in an incredibly dangerous uh, and, and very difficult time right now. Passions are high in Israel. Um, they are still extremely upset about what happened, uh, justifiably upset about what happened last October 7. Uh, and Iran, of course, as we know, it was in some form behind that. And so, you know, Iran's going to want to hit harder than the United States is, is willing to uh, countenance. And I don't imagine that Iran uh, would go much farther than what the United States would want, but it's a little bit um, hard to say at this moment. Right. And how will the escalating crisis in the Middle East affect the world economy and the global political landscape? Well, politically, you know, this is just one more problem that we don't need. Uh, you know, we have obviously the war in Ukraine, um, you know, which continues uh, apace, uh, and tensions in the South China Sea. Uh, and, you know, this broader Middle East war is simply, you know, not something that, that we should want, um, obviously. Uh, so that's obviously a potential risk. Uh, on the economic side, uh, financial markets are, of course, going to be affected. Uh, oil prices uh, will be affected. They'll probably be pushed up probably a little bit less than it would have been, you know, somewhat significantly, in fact, less than it would have been affected, you know, back in the, let's say, the 1970s or, or even the 1980s and 90s. Uh, because the oil market um, has, has changed so dramatically with uh, other producer countries coming online besides those in the Middle East. Uh, but one would imagine that oil prices would increase or hydrocarbon prices in general may increase. Uh, financial markets will become unstable. Um, obviously, this will continue to fan uh, the uh, maritime shipping uh, issues that are taking place in the Red Sea with the Houthi rebels, uh, you know, who have been uh, attacking ships and making shipping difficult. So this isn't going to contribute to that resolving itself anytime soon. Uh, so essentially, none of the outcomes uh, here are good. All right. I guess we'll have to see where this goes. All right, Professor Ritchie, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great. Thanks for having me.